But I'm going to hand over to Stuart, who is one of our members and also works for the Green Economy Coalition. And he's going to tell us some more info about that this evening. Hello, everybody. My name is Stuart. Um, I live up in Borstal. Um, so I'm a, I'm a Medway guy. Um, and uh, um, I'm a member of the Green Party, but I also work for a group called the Green Economy Coalition. Um, and uh, I've, you know, I, I've been back in the UK. I used to live overseas for many years, and, and I've been back in the UK for the last three years. And I, and I, I started beating myself up and saying, "Why are you not more active in, in the Green Party?" Um, we're, we're hitting a moment now in, in, in our time that I think it's really important to, to be green. Um, and um, in, in my uh, approach to, to get involved, um, Kate said to me, well, can you tell us about the green economy? Well, what is a green economy? So um, I've come here today to, to make, just to give you some, a few thoughts on green economy. I'll take about 15 minutes just to run it through. Uh, and then at the end, I suggest we just go to some questions and answers. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, if that's OK. I've got a, a, a short presentation, um, which um, I'll just click on that and share. Away. Can you see my screen? Um, yep. OK, good. So um, I, I work for a group called the Green Economy Coalition. We're um, a, a civil society uh, network. We're, in fact, the largest one in the world. Uh, on green economy, because there's actually not many coalitions around that deal with green economy. Um, and as you can see from the screen, there's a number of organizations. Some of them are, are organizations from, from Africa, um, um, from Switzerland, IUCN, WWF. Um, and we're a group together that works to, to promote a, a green economy. And what I wanted to do was to run through, you know, what exactly does, does that mean? Um, how do I? There we go. So, what is a green economy? Um, in, a, in, a, in, in a broad definition, a green economy is an economy that provides prosperity for all within the ecological limits of the, the planet. For too long, the environment and the economy have been seen as mutually competitive. And an inclusive green economy is an alternative to today's dominant economic model, which generates widespread, in, widespread environmental and health risks. It encourages wasteful consumption and production. It drives ecological and resource scarcities, and it results in inequality. So a green economy is an opportunity to advance both sustainability and social equality as functions of a, sta as a, of a stable and prosperous financial systems within the contours of a fragile and finite planet. Now we've got five themes that, that, that encompass this uh, and five principles. And the five themes um, are as follows. You, you see a, an image of a planet on your, on your screen and at the bottom, um, at the base of our planet image is nature. We all know that without nature, we can't survive. We're part of nature. And yet current economic models take nature for granted. Were we to value nature as an asset, not just as an economic asset, but as a life systems asset, I think we would keep, treat nature differently. So the green economy notes that our nature has wider value to our environment, to our societies, and yes, also to our economy. Above that, um, we've got the theme of tackling inequality. We see that inequality is dangerous uh, and an unfair social condition. Profound inequality precedes wars, it's unjust and it's destabilizing. So a green economy makes specific efforts to include people, especially those who live at the margins. We cannot green our societies if we leave most people behind. Then the next layer, greening economic sectors, that encompasses a lot of what we often think about as green. Here we talk about resource use, circularity, renewables, and building green enterprise. And then the next layer, the reforming financial systems, we argue that financial systems need to move the money to where it matters. And at the moment, financial systems reward short-term profit, irrespective of the environment and social costs. 
We see oil and carbon continuing to get massive subsidies and green alternatives are expected to compete with that. Perhaps we now need to start thinking about taxing what we don't want and incentivizing what we do want. And at the top is measuring in government. We need to measure what matters. And then we need to make sure that we govern by this. Right now, all that seems to matter is GDP and growth. And with a focus on this, we can remain blind to the destruction of nature and society. So underpinning all of that are, are a series of principles. And that, the principles that we've got here are that of well-being, where all people can create and enjoy prosperity. We've got the idea of justice. We're promoting equity within and between generations. Planetary boundaries. Um, the green economy looks to safeguard and restore and invest in nature. Efficiency and sufficiency. Um, support, supporting sustainable consumption and production. And then good governance. Uh, we're guided by integrated, accountable and resilient institutions. So why does any of this matter? There is a transition in progress. And I think over history, we've had the industrial revolution and we have seen technology with steam railways, electricity, oil, and now more recently, information and telecommunications. And each of those has been um, a, a fundamental changing moment within society where society has changed the rules of engagement, have changed the way that we have run our world. And, and I believe, we believe that we're on the edge of a new one now of a, a green economic transition. And we try to hasten that. The economy that we've got is clearly not fit for purpose. We've got dramatic levels of inequality. The top 1% own over 30% of, of, of global wealth. And you can see the bottom 75% existing on, on, on about 10%. Our economy is, is giving rise to emissions, um, which are growing dramatically. We're seeing a massive loss in biodiversity. At the bottom of the screen there, you can see the background extinction rate where you know, species do go extinct. Um, within nature. But if you look at the rate at which extinction is happening, biodiversity is becoming seriously challenged. So we're reaching the edge of environmental limits. 60% of our environmental systems, our ecosystems are, are degraded. And seven out of 10 risks globally are caused by environmental loss and poverty. That's World Economic Forum data. So there's an opportunity um, within a green economy to, with climate action, we can generate um, new jobs. If we don't, the, 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 the chance that $20 trillion worth of assets are just going to be wiped off the global market. If we, if the Food and Agricultural Organization uh, argue that if you were to restore degraded lands, there's a massive opportunity uh, to, to gain, as opposed to 75% of the Earth's land is seriously de degraded. And again, if you look at uh, carbon prices, it, we can generate about $4 trillion for public services if we use carbon taxes. And yet, at the, at the current rate, global pollution is costing the world about $4.6 trillion every year. So a green economy is looking at moving from the left to the right, from extraction, to restoration, from concentration of economic wealth to a actual distributed model, from linear to circular in, in, in terms of models of, eco of economy, from short term to long term, and from measuring profit and productivity towards measuring well being and the state of nature. It's clear that around the world, citizens everywhere are speaking out. We've seen um, Extinction uh, XR, we're seeing Fridays for Futures. Um, uh, people are beginning to take action and, and some policymakers and businesses are starting to listen. 
And it seems to me, and it seems to us in the Green Economy Coalition, that local change is the place to start because when you start working with local issues, they matter tremendously to the people who live in that place. There is a, there's a level of enthusiasm and energy which people who come together, um, working together, gathers momentum quickly. And so in the wider context, I think they're encouraging signs that we can build on. Citizens are, are driving change. We've had the Greta effect. Um, we've got the, our, our next door neighbors, the European Union with their new Green Deal, which uh, they're becoming global leaders now in, in, in beginning to shape their policy around a new Green Deal. We're seeing investment is beginning to rise. Green bonds are, are, are moving up. This data is a little bit old. It's 2017 data, data, but still 155 billion have been invested in green bonds and, and private equity investments are moving very much into um, sustainable investment. We're seeing sectors are beginning to change. Renewable energy, be that wind energy or, or photovoltaic stuff. Um, we're seeing a lot of investment starting to come into these sectors. So it gets me to, to say, so what's this got to do with the Medway? Um, and I mentioned uh, earlier, I, the, 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 the idea of locality, I, I think is really important because these are issues that, that matter to people here. And, and, and scooting around the, the, the website um, of, of the Green Party in Midway, I just cherry picked some of these things that, that seem to be coming up. Inappropriate housing, um, the, the concern that the, the, the loss of voice, that the people in Midway are not, just not being listened to. Um, I, I see people talking about protected species and free school meals and, and sustainable development goals and rising water levels. There's a a lot of stuff, and I've put one on the bottom there, uh, of jobs. Um, every time I, I, I walk down Chatham High Street, and you, you, you see, you get the sense of, of joblessness and, and, and the sense that the, that the people could really do with jobs. So the reason I bring this to you and in the work that, that we do is, is there are ways in which we can create a critical mass for change. And, and I, I guess simply is just by being useful. And by being useful is, is, is finding out who locally cares about what and who's doing what and fostering action around what people are doing, um, documenting the evidence from the actions and happenings and then feeding that into council policy making. Um, there are models coming up around the world around citizen assemblies, uh, which is a, a more formal structure, uh, which looks at, at, at better ways of, of governance, both at the local and national level. Um, I, I would be keen to, to, to find out whether or not there's any kind of space uh, in the Medway to, to test this in, in, in some ways, that, to, to bring people together in, in, in a useful way. Picking up on signature issues, what matters to many, the issues that would make the Medway fl flourish. Uh, you know, my personal belief is that by going local, working local, buying local, investing local, you know, small enterprises and opportunities for work within the Medway, within the green opportunities that are available, I think might be a, 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 an issue that does in fact matter to many. And, and Working on these issues begins to connect people to people. And when you get people to people connected, you can get towards a critical mass, which enables people to connect people to policy making. And the idea that policymakers and people uh, are existing in a, in a relationship where there, there is a responsiveness by policymakers to what people are asking for. And there are some tools uh, to help us to do this. Um, in my, my last slide here, in the, in the Medway, uh, I, I see that, you know, there's a lot of concern about what's going to happen here at the end of COVID. Um, uh, you, the, the high level of indebtedness, um, the levels of evictions, the levels of poverty, what happens at the end of furlough? And I'm inspired by the, the, the Green Party's Green New Deal manifesto, and I, I'll just 
picked up some of the issues that come there out of the manifesto relating to jobs, um, skills development for green jobs, sustainable forests, sustainable fields, the idea of universal basic income, and more devolved devolved power to county level and, and public services and, and fair taxation. So that's probably enough from me. And I'm going to, oh, um, from my side, thank you so much for giving me the time. Um, it's my passion. Um, and, and I'm really delighted to be able to share it with people who also have a similar passion. And I hope I can be useful to you. I look forward to meeting you all in the flesh maybe raising a, a glass of beer together. Thank you all for a lovely evening. <laughs> uh, and I look forward to, to seeing you all soon. Thank, thank you, Kate. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Kate.